and welcome to another movie review. I just got done seeing the new Martin Scorsese movie, Killers of the Flower Moon. Well, we mix these families together, and that estate money flows the right direction. It'll come to us. Shomikasi. That's how you are. I don't know what you said, but it must have been Indian for handsome devil. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is Scorsese's first movie since The Irishman, which is a movie I absolutely love, by the way. Um, it's one of my favorite movies of all time, actually. Um, and just like The Irishman, it's three and a half hours long. Um, <laughs> uh, by the way, too, I forgot to mention, uh, I forgot my microphone at home, so if the audio doesn't sound as good, please forgive me. Um, yeah, this movie's runtime, I kind of felt it a little bit at the end. Um, that was my main question I had going into this movie. Um, not knowing anything about it, you know, um, this is based on a true story, actually. Um, of course, Leo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro, of course, two, arguably two of, uh, not argu- no, nah, actually, I think Scorsese's most frequent collaborators ever. I know De Niro is, but DiCaprio at this point has been in so many movies, uh, by Scorsese. Two of Scorsese's most, um, frequent collaborators together on screen for the first time, and, at least I think this is the first time they've been in a movie together. Um, and man, it was really cool to see these two act with each other. Um, the other main character in this film, Lily Gladstone, plays Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio's wife in the film. And she's spectacular. Like, I haven't seen her in anything before. Um, and she did a fantastic job. All the actors in the movie did a fantastic job, obviously. Of course, Scorsese, arguably the greatest filmmaker of all time at this point. Uh, you can't go wrong with him. Obviously, he's going to make a great movie no matter what. And you get one every couple of years, you know. Um, so this was very much an event. I treated this like an event. Uh, <laughs> so getting to see this uh, actually at an IMAX showing was really cool too. Um, so the basic premise of the movie, of course, like I said, it was based on a true story. It's essentially about, um, I want to say it, it takes place in like the early 1920s. Um, maybe even a little before that. Uh, about a bunch of white men who uh, marry into uh, this Indian tribe's family um, to get their oil money, basically. And it is a crazy, crazy wild ride. All the twists and turns in it. Um, this is very much like a gangster movie, in a way. Like, once you see the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. Because Scorsese, obviously is made a lot of um gangster films and they have a certain formula to them and this one was no different um surprisingly because <laughs> like i said going into this movie i was expecting something completely different and you know it is based on a true story so it it does tell that story but with the uh scorsese flair i guess you could say um yeah my main issue with this movie like i mentioned earlier was the runtime dragged a little bit at the end. It is three and a half hours. Um, I was invested the whole time. You know, like I said, the last like 45 minutes, maybe hour, kind of dragged. The pacing for the, you know, the rest of the movie before that was totally fine. Like I had no issues. Um, also, this isn't the movie's fault, I guess. It's because like I said, it's based on real people. A lot of the characters in this film are deplorable. Um, and you really don't have anybody to root for. I mean, you do, but like the ones you're, the ones we're focusing on, like, you know, without spoiling anything, a lot of these characters, they don't have any redeemable qualities. So I'm just sitting here like, man, this movie is, it's kind of depressing. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it really is a tragedy what happened to these people. And I'm glad, you know, Scorsese, being the person he is, you know, with the name that he has, is able to tell this story and get it out there for people to know, um, because it really is tragic, um, <laughs> it's, it's really screwed up what happens to a lot of these characters in this movie, um, it's probably gonna get a lot of Oscar nominations, of course, you know, best picture, best director, all that stuff, you know, um, De Niro, DiCaprio, and, and, uh, Lily Gladstone, they're all gonna get nominated, I'm sure of it, um, very different character for DiCaprio, I'll say, too. Like, I haven't quite seen him play a character like this, I don't think. Um, you know, you kind of expect one thing, and you get a totally different thing, you know. Um, so, yeah, I really don't have a lot else to say. You know, go see the movie. Um, it's not quite a 10 out of 10 for me. It's not quite, like, a masterpiece, I guess. Like I said, that last hour 
like pretty much dragged for me. Um, but the movie really doesn't have any other issues aside from that. Like I said, the characters, uh, I wanted to like find some redeemable stuff in our protagonists, you know, but <laughs> you'll see the movie and you'll know what I mean. Um, as a rating, I can't quite give it a 10, like I said, so I'll probably give it like a nine out of 10, you know, um, yeah, I'll give it a nine out of 10. It was a very good movie. Very well made, obviously. Scorsese, you know, can't go wrong with him. But um, yeah, um, I don't really have much else to say. Uh, I'm trying to think. You know, I'm not going to do a spoiler section, really. Um, just avoid looking at the real people, you know, the movie's based on, because it'll spoil what happens to, you know, certain people. Um, you don't want to know. But um, yeah, you know, of course, the camera work and the, you know, the visuals and you know, when I say visuals, I don't mean special effects. I mean, like, the cinematography is, you know, everything looked great, you know. Um, and I like the way, too, the movie wraps up. Um, it's very unique. Um, I was pretty surprised, actually. Um, it was a really cool way to end the movie. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm really trying to think of words to say. Like, I really... I'm not really blown away by the movie, unfortunately. I was really hoping this would be contender for, like, film of the year for me. Um, I'm still, John Wick Chapter 4, as silly as that might sound, is still my favorite film of the year. Um, because on a technical level, that movie was spectacular. Um, so as of right now, you know, this, this will be in my top 10 probably. I have to check my letterbox. But, um, yeah, I really don't have anything else to say. Uh, Killers of Flower Moon, very good movie. Just be prepared, you know, it's, it's very long. Um, I didn't have to use the bathroom or anything, so I didn't miss the mo any parts of the movie. Um... My audience had maybe, like, 15 to 20 people in it. You know, it wasn't, like, a packed theater or anything like that. I mean, I went to an early showing at, like, 2.30. You know, so it's, it's a very long movie. So they had to show it early, I guess. Um, but, yeah, honestly, like I said, if you want to see, like, masterclass acting, this is one of those movies. Like, it's acting is incredible in this thing. Um, but go see it for the true story, of course, the atrocities that happened. Um... And, you know, the white man is the devil. Um, <laughs> um, well, actually, you know, fun fact. Um, I'm actually, on my mom's side, um, I do have Indian in me. As a Native American. I don't know which, you know, tribe or, you know, anything like that. But, like, I do have some of that blood in me. Um, and it's it's kind of crazy to think. Like, someone in my family probably went through this, you know, sort of thing. Um, generations ago, obviously. Um, so, it's really sad. Um, so go check out the film. I know it's based on a book. I don't know how closely, you know, it, it, if there was any deviations from the book or real life, you know, I'm pretty sure they probably stuck to, you know, all the same stuff. Um, but go check it out. Like I said, this is a, a film you want to see in theaters, support it. Obviously I know it's going to go on, um, Apple TV, I believe. Um, so go pay your money to go see it, support Scorsese, support cinema, you know, um, <laughs> so very good movie. Again, 9 out of 10 for me. Didn't quite blow me away like, let's say, The Irishman did. You know, I was just much more invested in that movie and the characters and everything. Um, so, I don't know. I just wasn't as into this one. But uh, still very good. So, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Sorry if my review was underwhelming. Uh, <laughs> I just don't have a lot else to say. So, um, let me know your thoughts of the film in the comments. And uh, I guess give me your top five Scorsese movies. You know, for me, it's... You know, Taxi Driver's number one, Goodfellas. Um, I probably put, like... I, I mean, in my top favorite movies of all time list, I know I have some in there. Um, I know Wolf of Wall Street's in there. You know, I know it's more recent. Um, the Irishman, sorry, that's my number three. Irishman's number three. Um, I think Wolf of Wall Street's, like, number four. And probably The Departed, actually. I really love The Departed. Of course, that one, Best Picture. Um... But I haven't seen every Scorsese movie either, so that's another factor, you know. Um, but yeah, that's probably my top five right there, actually. But um, yeah, anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching this one, and have a good one. Bye-bye.